And we are live for the Power Chat series. I have a special guest here today, Brett Thomason, uh, the winner of multiple divisions at the Wheat State Nationals. So I'm really excited to have you, Brett. Uh, how are you doing today? Thanks, thanks. I am uh, I'm doing great today. Today is an awesome day. That's so. great. Uh, so you competed at the Wheat State Nationals. Let's just start out of the gate. Tell me how that tournament went for you uh, and what you won there. Oh, it was great. It was a it was a great weekend. Um, it was a Pro Mac tournament. We uh, we went. Tom uh, Hinkle runs an awesome event. I've been a few times, and uh, it's always you know everything runs on time. He's got a good team behind him with his uh, his parents and his support system to to help run the rings. He always has judges that that come in and help him, and we keep it running. And we're we're in and out. You know, with uh, COVID, everybody's kind of going to to the um, schedules in the sessions, which mm -hmm. has been awesome. So something that will will stick around hopefully post, uh, you know, post pandemic. But it was great. Session started on time. They ended on time. It was fantastic. That sounds like a development that, like you said, came from COVID. That I think a lot of competitors, judges, and spectators hope stays the sessions, so you don't have like fighters bouncing up, getting ready, warming up, and then told to wait three hours later. Sorry, just kidding. Uh, so it's it's a great development that hopefully lasts. And tell everyone what you won there. Oh, um, so I did uh, weapons. I, I jumped back. Normally I do traditional weapons, and I jumped back into creative this weekend. Um, so that was fun. I won creative weapons, traditional weapons, um, and then I won point fighting, the open uh, fighting division, and continuous fighting. As well. And then you also won the grands as well for that. I did. I won the the overall weapons grand and I won the overall sparring grand. I uh, I did not do forms this weekend. Normally I do traditional forms and I, I stepped out of that. I had a student of mine, Dominic Lancaster, jump in and um, this was actually his very first tournament as an adult. Mm -hmm. And he uh, was able to win the traditional forms and uh, then actually win the open hand forms grant. That's great. I mean, it seems like you and your students did really well. Uh, uh, any other students there competing at the Weed State Nationals? Yeah, we had a we had a, we had a great weekend. Um, I had uh, two other junior students that that went with us, and and they both did really well. I had a student who uh, ended up with second place overall in the uh, overall grand with his bow and his third tournament ever, I think. And uh, another student who's been with me for a while, mostly does private lessons. And um, he did very well also. Great. So do you want to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and your martial arts background? Sure. Um, so I started I started martial arts when I was six years old. Um, I, I grew up in the in the 90s. So obviously, I was a, a Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, I was that kid. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom, finally let me take a karate lesson. Um, and so we went to the, just went to the school up the street and it turned out to be a, a great school. I, I stuck around. It was uh, my first, my first class was with Terry Kramer, mm -hmm. uh, who's a, a, you know, a legend in, in sport karate and sport martial arts and just happened to walk into the right school at the right time and uh, was able to kind of come up under under Mr. Kramer. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to uh, start training with him and go to tournaments and, and get all my all my ranks, all my black belts, everything under under him, uh, travel the country, uh, mm -hmm. make a, make a few teams, get to get to travel around and, and do a lot uh, because of of him. What a, what a great first instructor to have, because I feel like in some situations with martial artists, they start at a local school who uh, doesn't necessarily compete on an international or national level. And you kind of jumped right into it. And Mr. Kramer still competes in multiple divisions uh, in the senior division. So you won weapons, you won fighting, and you normally do forms. So tell us a little bit more about how well-rounded you are as a martial artist. Now, real quick, you said that he normally competes, he still competes in the senior division. Yes. He will drop down. Don't, <laughs> don't, make, don't make him mad. He will come after us. 
uh, you know, I'm in the 30 plus division now, but, but he will drop down. He'll take on the 30 year olds, the 18 year olds. He'll, he'll, he'll beat everybody still. Yeah. And yeah, he definitely can, but there's also such great competition in the senior there division is. itself. Um, uh, so definitely, definitely he, he can take is. on anybody. Yes. 100%. Um, so, so growing up, you know, tournaments were, were just something that we did because that's what we saw. That's what we grew up with. He was, um, he was traveling around the country. He was always on a different team and, and always going to tournaments and we would just load up the van and go. Um, and you know, we talked about, and you just mentioned that I, I did weapons fighting and forms. Uh, I didn't do forms this weekend, but, um, that was never, never an option to, to not do something, you know, he he was always someone who said if we were going to be a well-rounded martial artist we had to do all three we had to do our forms we had to do fighting and we had to do weapons as well and um that's something that you know it was just never an option for us to to not do forms or to not fight uh we did everything and i i think that that really you know kind of shaped who i am as a martial artist and and who i aspire to um let my let my students see and, and what mm -hmm. they do. So all my students that went this weekend, they did, they did everything. Yeah. I think that, uh, I also do do forms, weapons and fighting. And I definitely think it's a philosophy. Um, the, the idea of, you know, being well-rounded. And I think that translates, at least it does in my eyes, it translates beyond the mat. Um, and just being a well-rounded person, a well-rounded student, and not dropping off things that may be important to you or recognizing the importance of doing all three things that make you a martial artist. Um, so I was gonna ask, do you instill that philosophy into your students? And it seems like you do, and you're wearing a Premier Martial Arts shirt. So what? tell us a bit more about your two schools. 100%, so, so our students not, uh, they don't just have to excel in martial arts. Uh, you know, we we try to teach about the whole the whole person. We teach to the whole student. So school just started back up in St. Louis, and all of our kids are are going back to school. We're making sure that that they're on their grades. That you know, if they're in other activities, that everything we do, we 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 only settle for excellence. You know, um, so we're we're always setting goals and and kind of reaching out to those reaching reaching to that next level all the time um i have i have two schools here in st louis um they're both premier martial arts locations um and uh like i said earlier i started i started in ishinru karate um with terry kramer uh, and i've kind of developed into um moved into the the premier martial arts curriculum we do you know kickboxing um some krav maga a little bit of uh ground defense jujitsu um, but we still do that that karate base as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we get a, a good mix of, of uh, stuff in our class. Uh, so this is kind of like a two part question. Uh, as you know, a martial artist and a business owner, what led you to the decision to uh, pursue a, a premier martial arts curriculum in schools? Well, I was teaching high school. Um, so I started teaching uh, for at Mr. Kramer School for you know years and years and years. And um, when I graduated college, I started teaching high school English. And uh, I was I was in the classroom for five years, and was getting phone calls from from friends of mine who who owned PMA locations, and uh, they said you know hey this is what you this is what you should do you know you you love martial arts you love teaching you, I owned actually an ice cream shop at the time as well. They said you can do the business thing. This is, this is where you need to be. And, uh, so I, so I, uh, called, uh, Mr. Vanover. I called Mr. Baker, um, the, the, our CEO and, and, um, uh, talked to them about, about signing up and, um, ended up with, with one school and another school really, really quickly after that it kind of fell into my lap. So, uh, that was, that was it. Um, I had I had some great great friends who who said, you know, if you want to make a good living and make an impact in your community and uh, you know be able to really change some lives, this is where you need to be. And, uh, I jumped on, and it's been a uh, great. It's been great.
So one school is, is tough to manage. Add on another, add on the fact that we're in a pandemic, still in the pandemic. How are you, how are you managing all of those responsibilities? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's hard. Uh, you keep, you just, I have a great team around me. I have a lot of people who, who help. I've got some, some great employees, uh, some, some partners. I've got a lot of people who are, who are helping, um, along with just the, the structure that our corporate offices provide through premier, um, has been eye opening. you know, the, uh, the corporate structure that they have and the, the way that, that they have set everything up. You know, I just follow directions pretty much. <laughs> Yes, and you also inspire your students to compete as well. So um, what is the next tournament that is on your school's agenda or schedule? The next tournament that I'm doing is actually uh, the tournament that I am hosting. Uh, so when I when I started Premier, I kind of took a step back. I also I had a, um, I had a son and then I had a daughter and then we, we started a family. Um, and so I, I took a big step back from tournaments for a while, and I'm I'm just now getting to the point where I can I can go out and start competing again. My son actually is is four years old, and he competed in his first tournament this year, and uh, did did great. Went out and did his did his form, um, and so we've started competing again. Um, and I've done a couple a couple tournaments here recently, and uh, I'm actually hosting a tournament in September on September 25th in St. Louis called Battle for the Arch. And uh, that's the the next one on our on our agenda. We're gonna do some awesome things. We've got, of course, forms, weapons, and fighting. Uh, we also have our continuous fighting division. We've got flag sparring uh, for kids. We have a recreational division for like our first timers and maybe our kids who, who aren't quite ready to compete in tournaments, but they still wanna go out and be a part of something. Um, so we have all those divisions. We're also doing for our adults uh, tag team sparring, mm -hmm. which is so much fun. It is. It's fun for the fighter. It's fun for the spectator. It's a little stressful for the judges, but it's a great division. It's, it's always a, fun when a uh, promoter puts that on. It's so fun. It's so fun. So um, we're going to do, so like I said, we've got our regular forms, weapons sparring. We've got continuous sparring. We've got flag sparring. We've got our rec division, and then we've got the tag team sparring for, uh, for our adults. Um, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great great day September twenty fifth. Okay. All right. So anybody watching, make sure you hit that tournament up. And my last question for you is: you have a new family. You have I'm assuming if your son uh, competed at his first tournament, hopefully your daughter will too. Um, what's the main takeaway? The biggest lesson that your kids hope to that you hope your kids take away from martial arts. You know, I was very fortunate um, when I started martial arts. I was very, very fortunate to be around people who were great role models. And um, I was able to see how people work, how they how they have a great work ethic. I was able to see how people set goals and reach those goals. And I was able to see how people balance um, all the different things that come up in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I really hope for. For all my students, but for my children especially, um, is that they see the that it takes hard work, um, that it takes dedication, and that some days you get up and you have to go to class or you have to go to practice, and it's it's not exactly what you want to do in that moment, um, but you you set goals and you work until you reach those goals. Yeah, I definitely second that. And I think when people who are in martial arts think about tangible takeaways, they think about being able to defend yourself, which is obviously extremely important. Um, being able to stay fit and stay active. But for me personally, all the things that you mentioned are things that are so translatable and so important in just living your daily life, whether it be in martial arts, in the classroom, or in the workforce, or with family and friends. So. Um, uh, for everybody watching, I hope you had a great show. Thank you so much, Brett, for coming on the Power Chat series. Um, thank you so and much for uh, having him. Of course, yes. yes. Um, and thank you uh, for watching, and congratulations again on your win at the Weed State Nationals. Uh, and I hope to have you back on the show again. All right, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you.